Riley Boone, Oklahoma Softball. Thank you for joining us today. How are you? Good. How are you? I'm doing great. Thanks I'm doing great. Thank you for taking some time to to join us today. Um, as we as we sit here and chat, uh, your team is coming off two national championships, going into uh, a, a season, your senior season, not your last season, but your senior season. How excited are you? How how much are you looking forward to this upcoming season? Um, I think I'm kind of excited because it's a whole new team of dynamics of different type of players coming from different schools. So I think I'm really excited about building chemistry and getting to know different players from different places this year. How do you build that chemistry when you have, why, why is this season so, so new and different as opposed to other seasons? I think because the two previous years of winning back to back, it was kind of like the same team. But this time we have a lot more newcomers, including with freshmen. And so how we build it is we spend a lot of time together. For example, we do volleyball games at my house in the backyard. And the competitive spirit is still there. I think we get a little more barking at each other at my house. But <laughs> then we bring it out here and I think we just come together as one. Is that intentional to do activities outside of the softball complex? Is it intentional to kind of do team bonding mm -hmm. in that way? Or does it just happen? Sometimes we just say like, hey, you might want to play volleyball. And then 20 girls show up at the house and then we have to split in five. Last time we did it, we made a bracket <laughs> of like a double elimination type of bracket with the winner and everything. So it's pretty cool. Nice. I love that. I love that. That just shows that there's um, – camaraderie amongst the, mm -hmm. the girls on the team. Um, it, this goes without saying, but you're a part of a special program here at, at Oklahoma, um, one of the, the, the premier program for, for college softball. Um, I want to go back to the, the recruiting process. And you are, you're from Oklahoma. Yes. And so I have to imagine being a softball player coming up in Oklahoma, like attending and playing for the University of Oklahoma was a was a dream of yours. Is that yes. safe to assume? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Take me back to that time. And uh, what was it like getting recruited by Oklahoma and then receiving an offer from Oklahoma? It was a long time ago. I would say sixth grade was the rules have changed now. But back with like my class, the 2019 class, and also at 2020, it's like sixth grade, you're being recruited. Hmm. And other sports are like, they're like waiting till like high school, but it's already hitting for you. Eighth grade, I committed. And I think the biggest thing with this program was it was, even though I'm in Oklahoma, it was more, how do I put this? Like coach would ask me, why do you want to come here? And usually people say like super homey. It is homey, but my main thing was I want to win. And so being an eighth grader uh, at such a immature and young age, I didn't really know a lot about like the recruiting type of stuff that I know now. So I think the process, it was kind of overwhelming being young and I didn't really know a lot of stuff at that age. I just knew, oh, I want to win. Yeah. But I did, I really liked the coaches because it was more Coach Gasso was my friend, but she was more of a boss mm -hmm. type of thing. Eighth grade. Yeah. Eighth grade, you committed to Oklahoma. So your entire high school career, you you knew that this is where you were going to come. Yeah. As you're, um, so as as you're going through high school, did you take official visits to come visit campus here? Did you did you take any visits anywhere else? I guess not, if you had already mm -hmm. committed to Oklahoma. So. As part of that still recruiting process, did you take visits to Oklahoma to just to see what it's like on a game day or uh, to get a, a feel for the, the culture within the team or the, like the players in the program? Did you do any of that? I went with my brother. Okay. <laughs> my brother played baseball at Oklahoma State. So when he was getting recruited here, I just went with him okay. and saw the campus. But the only time I like – I came to camp still. The only time that I did like my – like softball part was when I had my official and that was about it. Okay. Um, 
faith is a big aspect mm-hmm. um, in this program. Um, Coach Gasso leads with her faith out in front. When did that become apparent to you? Did you know that in eighth grade when you committed, or did you see that as you're going through? When did when did the faith component of this program become apparent to you? My freshman year was when I of high school or college. College. Okay. So right when I got here, I didn't really know about Jesus, and then I met Grace Lyons, hmm. and then she kind of mentored me and discipled me. And I think that's when I started to get into my faith. And then when I got hurt the first time, that's when it like skyrocketed. I started really, I was, I would say I was lukewarm Mm -hmm. my, when I first came here, but then when I started like knowing Jesus and not just knowing of him, I think that's when it started. I'd love, I'd love to hear more about your faith journey. So, so you get here to Oklahoma and Mm -hmm. Um, Grace Lyons kind of takes you under her wing. Yeah. What What was the the journey like for you? H- how did Grace Lyons take you under her wing, or how did you start to grow in your faith and and that journey with with the Lord? How did that evolve? Grace Lyons. Well, Grace Lyons would she introduced me like I knew of it, but I didn't know. Like I said, like I knew of him, but I didn't know him. Mm-hmm. So. I was very curious and I had a lot of questions, I guess you could say doubtful questions. And she would take me step by step, always telling me like no questions are dumb. And then when I ended up getting hurt the first time, that's when I would say I was still lukewarm because it was like a reward thing. It was like, heal me and then I'll praise you type of stuff. So. That was when, that's when we got sent home for COVID. So then when I got home, there wasn't really that much community. So I was like, I feel like it would be the opposite when, but I dove more when I was alone. Mm -hmm. So I think as I'm diving more, that was when I had a lot of alone time. Um, And then I could always call on grace of questions or if I'm understanding something to have, if it's biblical of what I'm talking about for her to give me that feedback. So how did you, how did you dive deeper during that time? Did you, did you have grace? Were you asking grace? What do I, what should I do? Like, cause you're, you're alone. You're in isolation. Like we all were. Mm-hmm. Um, I guess, how did you know what you wanted to dive deeper into? Was it just like, I'm just going to read the Bible or did you have, Bible studies, Bible, did, was there any kind of group activities, Zoom calls or anything yeah. going on at the time? How did you dive deeper during that time? I watched a lot of sermons. I, if I would read, <laughs> if I'm reading Genesis, I'd text lines, be like, so why would Abraham do that? Like, I'm not understanding. <laughs> I started a lot in Old Testament, which was harder because I feel like it's a total different than the New Testament. So I'm asking Grace, I'm like, why are the Israelites doing that? I don't understand. She's, lit- she's like basically saying that's how like humans are. We're literally just like them. And so what I would do is I had a lot of alone time. I had a lot of quiet time. And I took the focus off of softball. And I just focused all on God. And my main prayer was that when I do come back, my focus is the same. I don't think about like... Am I going to get injured again? I ended up getting injured again, (laughs) but I wasn't even worried about it. Um, I just focused on God, and then the outside world just wasn't really in my, I guess you could say, my thoughts in my head. I love that, dude. Is there, um, as you you look back, I mean, is there a moment, like like you talked about, Bible knowledge is is one thing, um, but there had, there, for, there needs there is a moment when when Jesus becomes real to mm. to us as as followers of Christ. Um, can you look back and pinpoint a moment when when Jesus became real to you when it when it went from just knowledge to a relationship of, with with Christ? Yeah, I think when I remember I was in my room and we lived in an apartment when I lived in Owasso and we're well I'm sitting there I'm watching a sermon. And 
I just start crying, <laughs> like bawling my eyes out. I think it was the realization that I'm not alone and I'm a child of God and I laid my shame, my past, all that type of stuff at his feet. And I think I couldn't control my crying. And like, I was like asking like God, I was like, like, why am I crying? Why do I feel this way? And that's when I was just like, I, I believe like it's real. Cause I think the feeling that I felt isn't it like, I can't express it. It's like an inexpressible feeling. And it just felt like, I guess I can put it in like a physical. It felt like my imagining like all these things on your shoulders. And then like, I'm on my knees crying and it just felt like it was like just gone. Hmm. And then ever since then, I don't know. But yeah, I'll have, like I write poems so when I write poems, I've, I've sent in the lines and I think they're like, I can't do it on command. Like mm -hmm. when I write them, it's only in my quiet time with God when it's like I can call on it and then I'll just start yeah. writing them. Yeah. So, yeah. I love that. Would, do you feel like that would have happened, that transformation inside your heart would have happened if you had not been a part of this program? No. That's beautiful. Yeah. How um, influential, I guess, you've talked about Grace Lines. Mm -hmm. How influential has Coach Patty been to you and your faith journey, seeing how she lives her life, how mm -hmm. she's built this program, um, just the culture that's been set here? How influential has, has Coach Patty been? Super. I think when the World Series hits is because I – went through stuff during the World Series, and she was the only person who recognized that something was going on. And what I, what I love about Coach is that she can read you, like, you're, like you feel like your teammates can read you pretty well, but I think Coach reads all of us in a way that if anything's like slightly off, whether it is not even about play, it's not even about softball, mm. where Maybe, I don't know, your eyes or I don't know what gave it away, but she knew right off the bat. Something. Yeah. So I think she has a big influence on like our thoughts because we're always here. So I think her telling us 24 seven, like when you get here at 140, you leave at five, it's done. Like leave it at the field. Don't take it home. Don't, she doesn't want softball to softball to be our life type of thing. So I think she has like one of the biggest influences on all of us mm -hmm. on the field and off the field. Now you guys also have a team chaplain, yes. Sarah Roberts, who does not live here. No. Um, so how does, how does that, how does that work? How do you interact as a team um, with your, with your team chaplain and, and how influential has Sarah Roberts been on your faith journey? Um, for team chaplain, we usually do it like if we travel somewhere or if we have games here, she'll hop on Zoom and we'll do that. And it's not like a forced thing, like it's just thrown out there if you wanna come. Um, when it comes to, so what, we have a Bible study group chat and what okay. we do is when season hits, we pray to God for whatever he wants us to reveal to the world through us. So like last year, Sarah Roberts came and talked to us in person. Um, she was there most of the days um, at the World Series and that's when Get Out of the Boat came. And so we all come together and we pray about what wants to be revealed from God. And so I think with the influence, Sarah, Sarah kind of speaks to us like individually because like coach is more like team oriented mm -hmm. plus individual, but Sarah's more like what you got going on performance type of like things like where it's not your identity type of thing. That's we, we hear that a lot in, in, in the general sports world about identity. And, and I love that that's such a focus here is that uh, your game, your performance is not your identity. Um, 
as you said, Coach Gasso, she cannot force faith on yeah. on anyone. Um, how do how how does fellowship amongst the team happen? You said you have um, a team Bible study chat. Mm-hmm. There's FCA on campus. Do you guys go to FCA mm-hmm. meetings together? Um, so y- you can't force faith, but how does how does fellowship happen amongst the believers who are on the team? Um, is that something that's kind of has to be led by the players? Yeah, we do more like we have the Bible study group chat. Yesterday we had uh, our last fall with Tara Pogue. Um, we had our last fall Bible study with her. And we always put in our group chat without the Bible study one with the whole team, like just throwing it out there if whoever wants to come. We, after games, we do prayer. Before games, we do prayer. Um, I think one of the biggest things is that we do consistently is we do a lot of praying. So like we always want like to get teams over if they want to or not, Mm -hmm. not to force or anything, but if teams want to pray, but yeah. Did that just start this past season? Like praying with the opposing team? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's so cool. Uh, you clearly don't see that very, very yeah. often. How did that come about? I think we were, I don't know where we were. I think we were nervous to ask at first, mm-hmm. but then we started asking like every team, do you guys want to pray with us? Most teams said yes. Some teams, some teams, like some players would come and then some would go away. So yeah, I don't really know. How, I just know that we were kind of nervous asking at first. Because didn't want to seem like, oh, you should do this. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Um, I think, h- how do you, a- as, are there ways that you intentionally um, live out your faith in trying to influence whether it's teammates, whether it's classmates, whether it's your family? Are there are there ways now, like kind of maybe maybe some of your teammates are examples, like Grace Lyons mm-hmm. taking you under her wing or or whatnot. Are there ways that you intentionally try to influence others uh, in their faith? Yeah, I try to do more lead by my actions and my words because I feel like we're on a field most of the time, and I'm pretty loud <laughs> on the field. So what I'll try to do is. I try to create relationships a lot, whether not really like where I am, but on the field, I try to like do like little like, oh, you wanna start John today? Or you wanna start Genesis? Or like if someone who, like Sid Sanders is coming, I think she's one of curious, very curious of like wanting to know like hard questions that some people know, some people don't. So I think of, I would take her through John hmm. and I would just do maybe like 10 verses and I do like, a, like an inductive Bible study. And I try to do things more in person than like through text. because I feel like it's harder to get a, it was hard for me to like understand. Um, yeah, I try to lead through my actions, my words, how I treat other teammates so I could be a reflection of Jesus. So they're not looking at me saying like, your Bible says this and you're doing something a total different way. Yeah. Last question I have for you. Um, as, as a, as a senior looking back at your, at your career here, or looking back at to when you first arrived here at Oklahoma, um, and you're sitting here talking to me about faith and about leading some, helping some teammates with the Bible. Could you have imagined that when you first got here to Oklahoma? Could yeah. you have imagined that, you know, as a as a senior leader on this team, could you have imagined you being in a role like that? No shot. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> Not at all. No. Does that just speak to the program here? Yeah. 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 I think um, when people first come in here, super, um, I don't want to say it. Well, yeah, super immature, like mm-hmm. super – where you have no idea what you're doing. As many people are when they yeah. get into college. And then I think as you go, the culture of the team, I feel like the culture of the team just 
it just bleeds into you. Mm -hmm. Like, it's not, it's not like, it's hard, but it's not like you're super alone. You have no one to talk to because we're super, as a team, we're very like, I got you. Mm -hmm. Like, whatever you need, it doesn't matter. Any time of the night, you can call me. Vice versa with the staff. Like, the staff's just like that too. So I think the culture comes I don't want to say supernaturally, but it kind of does. Like you're not, like if you like you're telling me, like I'm talking about when I first came in, and I'm like, oh, like I'm like, oh, I used to be like that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I don't know, but yeah, I think the culture of this program has a lot to do of who I am today as a person. Well, and, and the the culture is, has a lot of has a lot to do with the success on the field mm -hmm. as as well. Um, Clearly, it's one of the best. You're one of the best programs in the country, uh, one of the best cultures around. So, I just want to say thank you again for for joining us today. We appreciate your time and and best of luck this season. Thank you. Thanks so much for watching today on Sports Spectrum. Make sure you click that subscribe button so you don't miss any other videos. And if you want more stories on sports and faith, check out our website, SportsSpectrum.com.